Welcome back, my friends. Big US banks are reportedly trying to dump commercial real estate loans dash. But buyers are scarce as pressures mount for property markets. Big banks are trying to dump commercial real estate loans as pressures mount in the sector. JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and Capital One are among those trying to shed debt exposure, sources told Bloomberg. Some banks are having trouble securing buyers, and have been holding onto loans as they search for a deal. What does it mean for real estate investment trusts? What does this mean for the real estate industry? What does this mean for the future of the economy? And, what does it mean for the future of the United States? But, before we get into that, please press the like button and leave us a comment below. Please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos. And, before we continue, a word from the sponsor of this video. Today's sponsor is InnerLife.com, creator of the InnerLife STS system. InnerLife STS is a cloud mobile platform for mental health care and its integration with primary medical care. InnerLife STS is designed for assessment, data collection and analytics, documentation, and progress tracking. InnerLife STS creates and composes conceptualized narratives and builds them into professional grade reports. These reports are designed for use by mental health professionals, primary care physicians, justice system professionals and universities and include mental health assessment reports, mental health treatment reports, and treatment progress reports. And InnerLife STS uses doctor-selected pseudonames for all patients. So, only the healthcare professional knows the patient identity. Big banks want to some of their commercial real estate loans, but buyers are proving scarce as troubles pile up in the sector, according to report out from Bloomberg this week. Some big names in the banking world are furiously trying to whittle down their commercial real debt holdings, sources familiar told Bloomberg this week, but have been struggling to find many interested buyers. JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Capital One, and m and Bank. Banks could be willing to sell property loans at a discount as troubles mount in the sector, but some are hesitant to sell off commercial real estate debt at too low of a price, as that could reignite fears of banking troubles, sources added. As a result, many banks are choosing to hold onto the debt while they seek better offers. JP Morgan, for instance, has been looking to sell a $350 million loan backed by the HSBC Tower in Manhattan, Bloomberg reported, with the bank offering potential buyers ultra-low interest financing, sources said. Capital One has also been trying to dump its portfolio of office debt based in New York, sources said, with the company's chief financial officer stating last month that the bank is seeking to sell $900 million of office loans. Goldman Sachs has been looking to sell its loans on hotel and apartment buildings, sources added, while M&T Bank is looking to shed a hotel loan. Experts have been warning of trouble for the commercial real estate sector after the slew of banking failures in early 2023 sparked a rapid tightening in credit conditions on top of higher interest rates spurred by the Fed's rate hike campaign. That poses trouble for the commercial real estate industry in particular, as there's around $1.5 trillion in commercial real estate debt that's set to be refinanced over the next three years, much of which could run into trouble as rates stay elevated and property valuations decline. The risk of foreclosure has also spiked as late payments pile up on commercial real estate builders. That could crescendo into a full-blown commercial real estate crisis, some industry veterans have warned, with around $155 billion of commercial real estate debt at risk of default, according to a recent MSCI report. And, now we hear that Starwood is set to launch a distressed real estate investment fund. This from an investment firm that, frankly, seems pretty distressed itself. Nonetheless, Barry Sternlich's firm is in preliminary talks with investors about the fund. Starwood Capital Group CEO Barry Sternlich said last week his real estate investment trust was foaming at the mouth to capitalize on distress in commercial real estate. An opportunistic real estate fund may be the ticket. The firm is in preliminary talks with investors regarding the launch of an opportunistic real estate fund, people with knowledge of the matter told Bloomberg. The vehicle hasn't formally launched and a spokesperson for the company didn't comment on the report. Starwood's most recent distress fund closed two years ago, counting more than $10 billion in commitments. Investors included some big pension funds. The Teachers Retirement System of the State of Illinois, Teacher Retirement System of Texas, and the South Dakota Retirement System. We are going to get a front row seat to trillions of real estate that will have to be restructured and hopefully will continue to build even a bigger book, Sternlich said in the firm's second quarter earnings call. Distress wouldn't be hard to find for any Starwood vehicle, as it's popping up everywhere one looks. 
property values have fallen as interest rates have spiked, and more defaults are likely coming as trillions of dollars of debt are set to mature in the commercial sector in the next couple of years. During last week's earnings call, Sternlich said his firm was taking a conservative strategy as it navigates a messy market. He also didn't express the same confidence as others regarding the country's hopes of dodging a full-blown recession. Starwoods Wright reported $168.8 million in earnings in the second quarter, or 54 cents per share, marking a 20% decline year-over-year. The Wright's revenue was $515.7 million, a 58% increase. Other companies are also looking to capitalize on distress in commercial real estate with funds of their own. This year, Arnaud Carcenti's 13th floor investments launched a $300 million fund targeting growth markets nationwide and distressed opportunities in South Florida and beyond. Barry Sternlich's Starwood Capital Group is in default on a $212.5 million mortgage backed by an Atlanta office tower, another sign of mounting distress in U.S. commercial real estate. The mortgage on Tower Place 100, in the Georgia capital's Buckhead District, matured on July 9 and Starwood failed to refinance or pay off the debt, according to a filing compiled by Computershare. Corporate landlords, including Blackstone Incorporated and Brookfield Asset Management Limited, have stopped making payments on office buildings they've deemed to be money losers as vacancies increased with the growing acceptance of remote work. In addition, borrowers' financing costs have soared as the Federal Reserve hiked interest rates to cool inflation and property values have declined. The delinquency rate for offices with commercial mortgage-backed securities swelled to 4.5% in June from 1.7% a year earlier, financing data firm TREP reported. Most CMBS financing is non-recourse, which means owners can walk away from properties without exposing themselves to further financial damages. The Atlanta area's office vacancy rate climbed to 22.4% in the second quarter, compared with the U.S. average of 20.6%, according to brokerage Jones Lang LaSalle Incorporated. Starwood Capital Group Chairman and CEO Barry Sternlich warned in November about the adverse effect that Federal Reserve interest rate hikes would have on the U.S. economy. Eight months later, his prediction came true as his company defaulted on a $212.5 million mortgage backed by an Atlanta office tower when the loan matured on July 9. Borrowers also are struggling to repay their loans in the corporate world as they battle high rates. Starwood Capital Group is one of the latest companies to fall victim to the rising rates when it failed to refinance or pay off its loan when its mortgage on Tower Place 100 in Atlanta, Georgia, matured on July Sternlich predicted that the negative impact of the rate hikes would be delayed, preceded by companies diminishing their 2023 budgets amid worries of a recession. Starwood Capital Group is not the first corporate landlord to default on its loan. Other companies also are defaulting, primarily for office buildings amid weakening demand for the space due to the work-from-home push that blossomed during the COVID-19 pandemic. In February, Brookfield Asset Management defaulted on loans for two office buildings in Los Angeles because of a lack of demand for the space, according to Bloomberg. In 2018, when the loans originated, the office towers were both 87% leased. Starwood Capital CEO Barry Sternlich doesn't hold back on his Federal Reserve criticism. On multiple occasions he's told CNBC anchors that the central bank's aggressive interest rate hikes could soon spur a deep recession. Starwood hasn't publicly explained its motive for pulling back from the residential housing market, where its right owns over 3,200 single-family homes. That said, it's clear that the decision to shop these 2,000 homes comes as Starwood faces an uptick in redemption requests and endures pain in the commercial real estate sector. According to an analysis conducted by John Burns Research and Consulting, Institutional investors, those owning over 1,000 homes, bought 90% fewer homes in January and February than they did in the first two months of 2022. Why are institutional investors pulling back so fast from the U.S. housing market? It boils down to the fact that the financial return on each additional home added just isn't that great right now after factoring in interest rates, house prices, and rents. Not to mention, some big investors like Yield Street think that national house prices, despite jumping a bit this spring, are poised for another step down. Not only are institutional investors buying fewer homes, some are reducing their overall single-family portfolios. The weakening commercial property market is the main reason why private rights including Starwoods and Blackstone Real Estate Income Trust are contending with high numbers of requests to redeem their shares. If you follow this channel, you already know that the Federal Reserve is aggressively raising interest rates. And the rising interest rate environment is sending real estate values into decline. The real estate market has been hit hard, especially commercial real estate. If you follow this channel, you already know that commercial real estate prices are falling across the United States. 
institutional investors snapped up properties during a stimulus-fueled frenzy. But now, rising interest rates have shifted the sands. And they are now unloading their properties in a hurry. For these investors, profit margins have crashed. But, what do you think? Please press the like button and leave us a comment below. Please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos. Please share this video on social media. Thank you for watching.